Hey everyone, Mike here. So if you've been following my channel for a little while, you may know that I'm a big fan of procedural audio. I think it has a lot of potential for the world of video games and specifically their soundscapes. So when I did my thesis on procedural audio, I actually made the sounds in Max MSP and then used a bunch of C sharp code to get that to play within Unity. This took a lot of time and effort just to get the sounds to play within the game engine. So over the last while, I've been trying to see if there are other ways to do this that are a lot easier. And as I've been continuing to explore Wise, I found out that it does have a synth engine within it. While this synthesizer is not quite as robust and doesn't have quite as many options as, say, Max MSP or Pure Data, it is very effective still and you can make a lot of great sounds with it. Needless to say, WISE is already set up for implementing with all the major game engines, so that part is a lot easier. So today I'm going to teach you how to make a great waterfall sound with uh, WISE's synth engine. This is obviously a little more technical than some of my recent analysis videos, but this tutorial is still going to be really helpful, and you know, even if it's not something that you personally would do, it may be very interesting just as a look inside to see what's going on and what's on the horizon in game audio. So first things first, before we start on our waterfall synthesized sound, let's take a listen to an actual waterfall sound that I grabbed from the internet. So you can hear that it's based in a lot of noise sounds, there's a lot of white noise aspects to it, and so it's definitely something that is a good sound uh, that is relatively easy to make with synthesis. So you can see in uh, Wise over here, I've already got some things organized, I've set up some folders, so you can see um, this is where I'm putting uh, all my procedural sounds for this tutorial. Uh, we're just doing a waterfall today, however, uh, waterfalls folder, and we're going to do a large waterfall sound uh, simply because that's something that I think is uh, a bit more exciting and probably used a bit more often in some games and um, more similar to what I've experienced with so far within uh, waterfalls within a procedural space. So now that we have this all this up, sound effects, object, all that. Uh, we're going to go to the contents editor and click add source. And so we're going to go to Wise Synth 1. This is uh, your synthesis software that comes default with Wise, or plugin, excuse me. So if you were to hit play now, you're actually not going to hear any noise. You're going to hear a sign tone like so. And I'm going to shut that off before it gets too annoying. But uh, the default synth sound with wise is a uh, thousand hertz sine tone so we're going to want to change that we definitely don't have anything that sounds like a sine tone in our waterfall so you'll see that within synth one there are two oscillators and a noise generator now the reason you haven't heard any noise so far is that by default the noise generator is set to negative 96 which is essentially muted so what we're going to want to do first is actually turn the sine tones to negative 96, because like I was saying, we don't really need those for this sound. Uh, it could be really useful for uh, a lot of other things within procedural audio. You could do UI sounds, uh, maybe some alerts or klaxons, but today well, that's not something we need. And then let's bring the white noise. I'm just going to put it at zero uh, for the level because that's just comfortable listening for me right now. But obviously, depending on your game, you could put it in a very different place. So let's take a listen and make sure we've got that. Awesome, we've got some white noise. So from here, you can hear that this really does not sound like this. So in order to alleviate this, we're going to want to add some EQ to get rid of some of the frequencies that we don't want. So let's go over here to the sound property editor and under effects, we can, we have a bunch of options here, but let's just go to the built-in wise parametric EQ and click default. And then once you have this up, you can click uh, the ellipses here or the you know, FX icon here. I'm just going to click this and this will bring up the effects editor. Uh, right now, I am not in the tab I want to be, so let's go to Effects Settings. And just for the time being, I'm going to turn off Band 1 and 2, and I'm going to start with Band 3. 
because the first thing we want to do is get rid of some of these higher frequencies. So let's change this from high shelf to low pass. Now, really you could do this low pass filter on any of the three bands. I just personally like to do it on band three, mostly because when you look at an EQ in a more standard DAW, this is where the low pass would show up uh, visually on the EQ. So as I've been working with this, what I've found is that if you set the low pass to 3800 hertz, that usually sounds pretty good to me. So let's do this by, uh, by comparison. I'm gonna turn this off real quick. Let's hear the white noise again. And now let's hear it with the low pass filter. So that's already sounding quite a bit better. Something else we're gonna to wanna to do is adding a low rumble to this waterfall. You know, it's it's a big thing. It's uh, gonna be very a very imposing presence. So uh, we're gonna to wanna to change this to peaking. Peaking is basically your standard uh, bell curve that you would expect in a EQ from your DAW. And so what we're gonna do is we're actually going to set this to 60 hertz to get that nice uh, you know low feeling in your chest. I'm gonna change the EQ to 0.75 so we can uh, get a bit of a wider curve. And then I actually personally like to turn this all the way up to 24 uh, decibels. Uh, again, this is all subjective, uh, basically what you're wanting for your game, your sound, or what just sounds good to you for a waterfall, but uh, this is how I'm feeling. I think these settings that I'm gonna be showing you are pretty good. So let's take a listen to what we have uh, before and then now with the low rumble. So this is what we have with just the low pass. And now with the rumble. So that's already sounding a bit bigger and more imposing. Um, there were some other mid frequencies that I was noticing in that waterfall sound that I really wanted to bring out as well. So let's turn on band two, and we're gonna change the band to five. Uh, the uh, excuse me, the gain to five. Uh, and we're gonna set the frequency to one thirty-five. So some mid low frequencies. Uh, and then just to make it a bit wider, we're going to do 0.05. Uh, so now let's hear how things are only a little different, but still different enough where it's relevant. And now with the new band. So you can hear that's there a little bit. <laughs> 